We need to harvest wind energy in the most efficient way possible. This requires sleek blades to continuously sweep fast across the oncoming wind. That sounds like a wind turbine, but wind turbines have problems with efficiency as they scale. First, let's look at the structure. It's a solid cantilever tower on a massive reinforced concrete base. Basically, these turbines become much heavier and more wobbly as they grow. This weight gain happens faster than the power increases. The structure becomes less efficient as they grow because they use more material per power output. As for the blade, only the tip of a wind turbine blade is moving fast. The tip of a wind turbine is its most aerodynamically efficient part. The rest of the huge structure mostly exists just to push that blade tip into the wind at height. But wind turbines need to scale so that they can harvest the stronger, more reliable winds at higher altitude to generate more power per land area used. Kite turbines are a new way to enable scaling and efficiency. Kite turbines use less material to fly continuously fast through large areas in stronger winds at high altitude for more power output. The kite turbine is made of a network of kites. The structure of the kite network is kept in tension by the pressure of the wind. When structures work in tension, they can use materials more efficiently because the materials align with forces. Kite turbines operate like wind turbines. The kite blades fly a similar path to wind turbine blade tips. The spinning kite turbine rotor converts wind energy to torque. The torque is transmitted along a shaft of tensile tethers to turn a generator and make electricity at ground level. Keeping the generator at ground level and holding onto the rotor from ground level avoids needing to use a huge steel tower and concrete foundation. The ground station has an anchor which screws into the ground. This significantly reduces the size of equipment needed to install a kite turbine. So you don't even need a road to bring the equipment to site. The kite turbine rotor has a hollow axis. It has no blade roots. The blades don't connect to a rigid hub. This means the blades, all of the blade, flies more efficiently at a large radius and avoids flying slowly in the center. The shape of the rotor is maintained by aerodynamic and centripetal forces from autogyration, as well as using a lightweight connecting ring for launch and flight stability. The kite turbine rotors can be stacked upwards and concentrically. The large radius also means the number of blades can be increased on one rotor efficiently. This modular method of scaling the designs maintains the blade sizes appropriate for the most probable wind. This keeps the whole network structure very lightweight. If we made the kite sizes too large, they would require unrealistically high winds and they would be inefficient and difficult to fly. But by networking ideal size blades, we can scale a kite turbine deployment by hundreds of blades, potentially to huge sizes. The same pattern of structures growing and then changing to tension-based designs happened in bridges and stadiums. Tension design aligns material with forces to make very efficient structures. Lightweight construction has the benefit of being cheaper, but more importantly having less embodied carbon so kite turbines are cleaner and cost less to build. They're also easy to transport, deploy, take down, service at ground level and then redeploy if you want. So far, we've only tested small systems, but our models and test results show that kite turbines should be able to take advantage of the better wind resources at high altitudes. At only 500 metres above ground, the wind over mainland Europe is as powerful as it is over the North Sea at 100 metres. We flew 70 prototype variations on only a household budget, and yet we achieved an astonishing over 800 watts of electrical power output per kilogram airborne. We still have a lot of scope for improvement. We're now working on an automated deployment system and more stable generation controls to enhance safety and reliability. We also intend to perform further study of offshore suitability. This next phase of work needs funding, so we've now partnered with Shell Game Changer, HIE and the Shetland Islands Council. You can join in too, get in touch if you have a hefty clean energy research budget, or you can build one of our models using the guides on Hackaday, or just be in touch for a chat, um, share a, a like, etc. Thanks. This is why we're developing kite turbines at Windswept and Interesting.